friends, Tawana Amen here. I'm a podcaster with Women World Leaders, an amazing ministry that empowers and equips women to embrace their true identity in Christ and to become all that God has created them to be. I pray that the message today encourages and inspires you. I pray that the Holy Spirit uses it to minister to your heart in mighty and profound ways. Today, the topic of conversation is forgiveness is the key. Yes, we all need to forgive. We have all been wounded by individuals. There have been things said and done to us that have caused deep pain to our hearts. There are individuals listening who are still finding it hard to let go of the hurtful things that have happened to them in their past. I am a biblical counselor at the church my husband and I attend, and there have been many times that a woman has sat in front of me, tears streaming down her face, as she talked about something that occurred in her life that caused deep trauma. I will ask the woman when it happened, and some have told me that it's been 20, 30, even 40 years ago. That's a long time to carry that burden. Now, we must remember that we have caused grief by what we have said and done to others. We are not to judge. God tells us in Matthew 7, 1 through 5, Judge not, that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is a log protruding out of yours? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you'll be able to see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's. Now think about this section of scripture. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye? when you can't even see the log that is protruding out of your own. Jesus is telling us to stop focusing on the sinful imperfections of our brothers. We need to seek to understand what is going on within ourselves. Sometimes we spend too much time focusing on the flaws of others. We cannot change anyone. We need to be introspective, prayerfully seeking to examine our own thoughts and feelings, trying to understand the areas that need work in our own hearts. Psalm 139, 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. This is a great prayer to meditate on. God will reveal the areas of sin in our hearts if we will let him. Now we are called to be lights in others' lives. Proverbs 27, 17 says that iron sharpens iron. Well, that means that there will be times that we have to say something that brings conviction, and that will help someone grow in their relationship with the Lord. But we aren't to condemn or ridicule. We aren't to taunt and tease. Our goal is to build people up, not break them down. Galatians 6, 1 and 2 says, Brothers and sisters, If someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. The Apostle Paul is instructing us to gently restore the individual, to be kind, to be considerate, to be gracious. I have many opportunities to minister to women. I always try to speak to them in love. If I'm correcting someone, I will say that I've struggled with that in my own life. I want them to know that I can relate. I'm not there to just correct them and tell them what to do. I will share how I had to work through similar situations to overcome the sin in my own life. And then I will direct them to the Word of God. That is what will bring freedom and deliverance. I will encourage them to spend time meditating on His truths. I will help them understand that the correction is meant to create more holiness in their life, to cause them to be more like Christ. I'm not trying to prove that I'm right. 
I'm not trying to get my two cents in. My heart is for my words to be like Proverbs 16, 24. Gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. So what happens when someone hurts you? Do you believe they must apologize? Do you want to hold them accountable? Do you feel the need to confront them, even if it was many years ago? Well, I want to share my journey on the issue of forgiveness. I experienced a lot of bullying and verbal abuse while growing up. It's sad that I had so many hurtful things happen to me at such a young age. And there were a few people that said and did things that really caused a lot of feelings of insecurity and inadequacy. But I seemed to be able to pull myself up by my bootstraps and march on. I think we all have gone into survival mode, haven't we? On the outside, it seems like we're doing fine. But it is a facade because on the inside, there's so much fear of failure and rejection. It has been paralyzing, but we learn to move on. Now, fast forward to my first year of marriage. I found myself super sensitive. I mean, I was constantly feeling wounded by what someone did to me. I would come home and tell my husband the situation and he would tell me to just forgive. Now he was right. That is what I needed to do. (laughs) But who knew that I wasn't mature in that area? I sure didn't. I wasn't really ready to hear that. I wanted him to listen to what had happened and to be sympathetic to my pain. And because he didn't validate my feelings, I would get angry. I'd find myself really upset with him. And if he didn't apologize, I would hold a grudge. I'd cross my arms, tap my foot, and wait for him to repent. But what I didn't understand is that he didn't agree with what I'd done or the way I was responding to the situation. So he wasn't going to apologize. He was actually waiting for me to. It was like we were on a spin cycle, going round and round in circles. In the first year of our marriage, we would meet with our pastor once a month for maintenance counseling. He knew there would be challenges. He wanted to help us navigate through what he knew would be some really rough patches. Boy, was I ready to go over my list of grievances. I couldn't wait to sit down and tell the pastor all the ways my hubby was insensitive. Well, what happened next literally blew my mind. When I went over the things that I was offended by, the pastor said, Well, you're unforgiving, unloving, and judgmental. What was he talking about? I practically fell out of my seat. I told him that men stick together. They're all alike. I needed to go to a woman. That way we could see eye to eye. So off I went. Well, I was in for a surprise. She ended up telling me the exact same thing. What is wrong with you people? (laughs) I couldn't believe it. You too? As she began ministering to me, things began to surface. Can you believe? From my childhood. That's right. There were numerous people that I hadn't forgiven. When she began asking me about my hurtful experiences, I began to weep. My heart ached. I couldn't believe how difficult it was to talk about. And she explained, Tawana, you were deeply wounded, and you did motor on. You believed you forgave, but saying it in your mind isn't enough. It's something you have to work on. It's something you have to work through. And then she took me to Matthew 5, 43 and 44. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. She told me that I must pray for those people. I found that really hard to do. But I started meditating on the scriptures and personally praying for the individuals by name. Even though I didn't know where they were, I asked God to bless them. I prayed for their salvation. It was challenging. But God started moving in my heart. I started feeling love towards the individuals. God began to wash the hurt away. It was miraculous. She helped me understand that because I had a lot of unresolved forgiveness, I was easily offended by people who were insensitive and unkind. And the more I meditated on his truths on forgiveness, the more I was able to let things go. I was becoming more like Jesus. I started being able to not take offenses so personally. Yes, they still hurt. Yes, I am human. But I wasn't going to let it define or break me. I am a child of God. 
my security is in the Lord. I can't let the judgments of others weigh me down and hinder me any longer. Those individuals never apologized to me. They never came and told me they were sorry. They never acknowledged that they had hurt me. But we sin against the Lord. We don't always say we're sorry. I'm amazed at just how forgiving and loving He is. His love is everlasting. It is eternal. In Psalm 103, 10 through 12, it says, He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is His steadfast love toward those who fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does He remove our transgressions from us. He doesn't hold our sins against us. That is reason to celebrate. That is reason to rejoice. Psalm 32, 1. Blessed are the ones whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. That is us, friends. We are believers in Jesus. We are sons and daughters. We've been accepted into God's family. We are children of the King. Our Savior died on the cross for our sins. He paid the ultimate penalty to purchase a place in heaven for us. Hallelujah. Can I hear an amen? Isaiah 43, 25. I, even I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I remember them no more. As human beings, we hurt one another. We offend one another, sometimes by accident and sadly, sometimes on purpose. We may spend hours, days, and even years doing penance for our sins when it comes to people. Some may never forgive us. But God's sacrifice on the cross enables us to be free of unforgiveness. The weight can be lifted. The pain can be removed. Luke 23, 34. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. They've been blinded by the enemy. They can't see. They don't know. Jesus shows unconditional love to us, and then he tells us to love like he does. It's not a request. It is a requirement. And what's amazing is that when we seek him and his word in the area of forgiveness, he will give us the grace to forgive. He will help us to love the person that's hurt us. He will help us to forgive from the depths of our heart. In Romans 12, 14, it tells us to bless those who persecute us, to bless and to not curse. How can we bless someone? We can't without the power of the Holy Spirit. We can't love unconditionally without his help. We are dependent on his strength to enable us to do the right thing, to let things go, to leave them in the Lord's hands. God has such a better way of dealing with people than we do. And God tells us to love them and to exhibit grace and to extend mercy. May we not hold on to hurts. May we pray for those individuals who have caused pain in our lives. And may our goal be to make peace and to truly be able to let things go. James 3.17 says, But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits, unwavering, without hypocrisy. Isn't that amazing? We are so grateful that you tuned in today. We so appreciate you. And we pray that the words bring healing and restoration. God bless you until next time. Thank you for listening to the Women World Leaders podcast. Join us each week as we explore together God's extravagant love and courageous purpose. Visit our website at www.womenworldleaders.com to submit a prayer request, register for an upcoming event, and to support the ministry. From his heart to yours, we are Women World Leaders. All content is copyrighted by Women World Leaders and cannot be used without express written consent. God bless you, and thanks again.